Hey now, how is everybody doing today? Now today's video is kind of the second part of the last video where my sister and I went on to San Diego and crossed the border to sample a Tijuana dentist. Well, she did, not I. I went to visit the wine country. My cousin Sylvia and her boyfriend Brian took me down. They are experts on the area and something happened. That There's a place that I wasn't expecting that really is going to take over this video. It really captured my heart, captured my soul, and you're going to love this place. If you ever want to visit a restaurant near the border, put this in your top three of your bucket list because this is, you can't fail with this one. But as most video creators often do, I'm going to save that part. I'm going to save the good stuff for last. Like I do eating a plate of whatever, I always save the good stuff for last. So as you know from previous videos, I have a rather large family. And if you didn't know that, be sure to go back and binge watch. Come on now, you gotta catch up on my stories, all right? Now, my father, oldest of 10. My mother, second oldest of 10. So I've got a lot of cousins out there, as you might, as you might guess. So every time I meet up, or me and my family meet up with our cousins, we're Mexican. We like to drink. So nothing changed. We showed up. They showed us San Diego. We had some mezcal margaritas. Went to visit another family member. They had IPA beer waiting for me. Everybody knows I like IPA beer. Yes. So the next day, heading out to the Valle de Guadalupe, the wine country of Mexico, this guy was a little cruel. <laughs> I wasn't about to indulge in wine again. I just did not have the stomach for it. So I hate to say it was wasted on me, but man, I, looking back, I sure wish I could have sampled some of that. I had water, I had, I had to hydrate. <laughs> but after breakfast, Brian and Sylvia, uh, they really, they took me on a great tour. They took me to a museum. Uh, let me get my notes here. The museum was called the Museo de la Vid El Vino. Museo de la Vid y el Vino. If you're interested in museums, then I think you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, at that point, I, I just didn't wanna look at wine, not even in, in pictures, but it was a little interesting. They had, they had great visuals, they were selling wine, obviously, and they had a lot of portraits from, the, uh, from local artists on sale, which was, it was nice. So if you're interested in museums, make sure you put that on your checklist towards uh, your first or wherever you're at in your wine tasting journey. The first winery that we came upon, we were it was the only winery that had a dirt road. So even before you got there, you knew it was gonna be first class. It's called El Seto. I've never seen that in the United States. In fact, I've never seen it in Mexico. Um, and it's probably because it's a higher price wine. It's not a label that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a price before label, actually. So um, again, I didn't sample any, but I was very impressed with the grounds. Um, I was very impressed with the store that they had, with the wine tasting section. Their selection was enormous. Everyone spoke perfect English, which, which is a plus. Again, did I mention the paved road? Helps a lot. We then went to a winery. It was more like a winery slash restaurant. It was very family oriented. It's called Casa de Doña Lupe. A large sitting area. Uh, if you're under the shade, it gets hot out at that wine country. Very hot. And there's misters everywhere, so that helps bring the temperature down. There's a nice little store in there, and um, yeah, it was nice, great sitting area. So I would put that on your list as well. And then we went to uh, this place I really enjoyed. It's called Via Montefiori. Via Montefiori. It's Italian owned. The owner, Paolo Paoloni, from Italy, he actually snuck grapevines uh, across the border into Mexico, and from there, he built his empire. But interesting man, uh, very nice of him to stop by and actually have a chat with us. This uh, very high temperature, at the wrong time of the season, then you can lose all the, all the crop. And uh, like uh, far. June, in June, then uh, when the cluster is not ready yet, if you have a, a 
uh, under Fahrenheit, then you can last all day. It dried up very easily. A great scenic area. I really like the, uh, the employees there. They're very helpful, very friendly. And of course, the ice water was smashing. We stayed overnight in Ensenada. In fact, we, we, they drove me through Ensenada because I had never been before. Um, I didn't really, I think I took a couple video shots of it, but um, if you've been there, you, you know what it looks like. Uh, maybe I'll go again. But um, the hotel, it's called the Hotel Las Rosas. Um, a beautiful hotel right on the coast. Would I stay there again? I don't know. I, I don't know if, what else is out there. But we had some issues with the room. We had a misunderstanding with the pool guy. And when we found the source of the problem, I don't feel that they really went out of their way to, there wasn't much empathy involved. It was kind of like, well, you know, that's the way it is. That's, that's the rule. The pool area is well kept. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the pool. Hey guys, I'm really glad that you tagged along with me on my journey into Mexico. Please consider, you know, subscribing. I've been going through my analytics lately and it shows that 80% of the, my viewers are not subscribed. So I know a lot of you are uh, frequent viewers. So go ahead, it just takes a moment, click that little button. It'll do wonders for my channel. Oh, oh, and if you'd like to support my channel, help me continue making these videos, be a member of my Patreon, or you can just buy me a cup of coffee on PayPal. So my cousin Sylvia and Brian picked me up at 6 a.m., 6 in the morning, because it's gonna take an hour and a half to get to the first stop during our wine tasting visit. But that first stop was to have breakfast at, see if I get this right, El Case, El Casa, El Casa, El Casa de Doña Estela. <laughs> now this lady is Famous. I had never heard of her before, have you? I don't know, unless you're familiar with the area. This lady has had some well-known chefs visit her, all right? Let's see, people like uh, Rick Bayless, Andrew Zimmerman, Gordon Ramsay, Anthony Bourdain, and many other international chefs that had, have visited Doña Estela. You're gonna need to go off-road to visit this uh, restaurant. You know, we went from Ensenada on, the roads were paved, it, it was a highway, it was great. Um, but then you take an abrupt right turn, and by the way, if you're gonna rent a car to make this trip, make sure it's a four-wheeler, because this place is gonna have you, well, you're gonna need to be strapped in, <laughs> because these roads are bumpy, dusty, and not what a typical gringo would expect. Do you have your seatbelt on? No. Why not? Because... Put it on. Oh my God. I don't think she had it on the whole way up. <laughs> you did? Guess she was right here talking to us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but it's all worth it because this restaurant, you guys, mm, Doña Estela has quite a story. She started when she was very young. Um, she, from this area, she would cook for the local field workers and everybody took notice that these field workers just kept coming and coming back every day for her food because it was so authentic and so delicious. Well, one day, there, was, there weren't too many wineries around at that time, but the ones that they had, there was a telenovela that wanted to shoot episodes there. Well, these actors and actresses, once they sampled this food, the word back then, it went viral. <laughs> there was no internet, but can you imagine? This group of actors spread the word internationally and people came, interest came from all over. Now she was not a business person. Uh, she didn't have a business plan. It just kind of organically grew and grew from a small little store that she had where she sold her food to this restaurant where it is right now. This restaurant has its own little ranch. Uh, all of her, all of the beef, the pork, the goat, 
everything that you that she serves up here is raised right here on her ranch. We asked her because I we ordered goat and this the goat was for breakfast. It was so delicious. We asked her how what time do you wake up every day to prepare these meals? And she says, I wake up anywhere from two to three o'clock in the morning because these the meat has to be buried that early. And on any given day, the restaurant is packed and everybody's wanting to eat goat. So we asked her, well, how many goats do you kill on a daily basis? And she says, on the weekend, we can kill anywhere from 10 to 20. Can you imagine? Oh my goodness. And this woman is so nice. She's so friendly. She comes up and talks to everybody on the tables. She's behind the stoves. She, she does it all. She was pretty proud. She was showing us these pictures of these famous chefs that she actually cooked with. Anthony Bourdain and Gordon Ramsay, she says, she took into the kitchen and she tried to show them how to make authentic tortillas and they both failed. They, they couldn't do it. They could not roll the masa. They couldn't make a round tortilla, round enough, I guess. And she's most proud of, I mean, she's, she shows you these pictures of these famous chefs, but she's most proud of this award that she received. This is an international uh, gastronomic club, I guess, society, and they gave her the best breakfast in the world award. You can't get better than that. So here she is holding that trophy. Now, video does not do food justice, uh, but I took some shots and doesn't this look like authentic Mexican food? Mexicans from all over come to her restaurant for this authentic food. It is amazing. The pancakes, I didn't try the pancakes, but they're made out of corn. Uh, breakfast is served all day, and a lot of people order these pancakes with syrup and all as a dessert after their lunch or dinner. This restaurant's open from 8 to 5, but get here early like we did. We were one of three cars that showed up first because when we left, Look at the line of people trying to get in early for lunch. Not going to happen. So uh, remember this restaurant. Remember this name. It is a must-see, a must-sample. Hands down, I love this place. Okay, folks, the next video, I'm traveling deeper into Mexico, San Luis Potosi. I'll see you there.